Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, we will be discussing the coding question for the TCS NQT preparation for 2024 batch. This is the fifth coding question video that I'm making under this playlist. Okay, so till now total four coding questions have been made and all of them have been accumulated inside this playlist. That is the name of the playlist is TCS NQT 2024 preparation coding plus aptly discussion. So currently we are focusing on coding questions and later on we will be discussing the aptitude questions also this is the fifth coding video that i'm posting so guys if you have not subscribed to until now please subscribe it because every day we are trying to post new new videos coding as well as aptitude videos will be posted in future so make sure that you are present on this channel as well as join our telegram groups also so so let's just start this video and before starting the video please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel into packets okay the chocolate packets are represented an array of n numbers of integer values okay the task to find the empty packet of chocolate and push it to the end of the conveyor belt so let's just simply understand with the help of the example so it is nothing just that we are given an array okay so we are given arrays and each element represents the number of chocolates in that particular packet okay so here inside this packet there are four chocolates inside this packet there are five chocolates and inside this there are zero packets so what this question is saying this question is saying that okay you can see that there are some packets with zero chocolates in them so we just have to move them to the end of the array or the end of the conveyor belt so this packet contains zero uh, non-zero number of chocolates so it will remain like this this packet contains non-zero chocolate so it will remain like this this packet contains zero chocolate so it will be moved at the last of the array so this is the input that is given to us and this is the output that is expected that is all the zeros have been moved towards the end of the array and if you will look closely you will see that the relative order of all the packets are same that is 4 5 1 9 5 so here also 4 5 1 9 5 so relative order will remain same of the packets which are containing chocolates and all the packets with zero number of chocolates will be moved towards the end of the array so this is the question that we need to do okay so let's just see with the help of example next example also so here there are two packets in initially which are having zero chocolates okay and then there are four packets which are having non-zero chocolates that is one two four five so in this what will again what will happen so all these packets with no chocolates will come in front okay will come in front with the relative order same and those packets which are having chocolates at zero will be moved towards the last of the array and this is how our output will look like but two things to notice just that all the zeros should be moved towards the end of the array and the relative um, relative uh, positions of all the non-zero elements should be same that is uh, in input 1 2 4 5 are coming in the same sequence in the output also 1 2 4 5 should come similarly here in the input sequence there is 4 5 1 9 5 and in the output also there is 4 5 1 9 5 so relative order should be kept same for the packets okay and all the zeros should be moved towards the end of the array so now let's just discuss the approach of this particular question okay so guys the approach is very simple uh sorry yes so the approach is very simple what we'll do we'll be using the two pointer approach so here is our input array that is 0 0 1 2 4 5 and we know the output is all the zero should move towards the end of the array and relative order of all non-zero elements should remain same so output will be 1 2 4 5 and then two zeros okay so we, what we'll do we'll take two pointers i and j i will be for iterating the array and j for marking zero positions okay so here we have taken two pointers initially they will be pointing to the first element okay first element of the array only why i is used i is used to iterate the array okay i is used to iterate the array and j is used to mark the position of zero because we need to swap the element because zero needs to move towards the end so we need to know that at which position zero is there and it at which position non-zero elements are there so i will be for iterating the array and j will be for marking the zero positions okay now if the error of i that is the i was for the iteration of the array so if the current element is zero then we will do nothing simply move i to the next position okay if the current element is not equivalent to zero then swap error of i with error of j why we are swapping because error at error of j we will have the position of zero we will have the position of the zero element okay so we will swap error of, error of i with error of j and move both the i and j to the next position so i know by reading this approach you will not be understanding anything let's just like dry run this particular code so currently what we are we are at uh, where we are so we are at zero position so i was used to iterate the array 
so if error of i is 0 then do nothing so currently error of i is equal to 0 so we'll do nothing we will simply move i to the next position okay now again we will check now we are next position so next iteration is there so again we are error of i is again 0 so we'll do nothing we'll move to i will move i to the next position okay so i will go here now again we will check so again we find this now that error of i is not equivalent to 0 so this condition is fulfilled fourth one then what we'll do we will swap error of i with error of j and move both i and j to the next position so what we'll do we will be swapping error of i with error of j so now this will become one and this will become but this will become this will become zero and after this what we'll do we will move j to the next position and i to the next position okay now again we'll check error of i not equal to zero okay error of i is not equal to zero so again we'll swap error of i with error of j and we'll move j and i both to the next position so again here we will swap so two and then here also it will be zero and again we will move i to the next position and j to the next position okay again we'll check for error of i again error of i is not equal to zero it is four so again we'll swap those values so here it four will come here zero will come and we'll move towards the next position i also to the next position okay now again we'll check error of i again error of i is five so it means it is not equal to zero so again we'll swap the elements so it will become five here and zero here and we'll move i and j to the next position okay i and j to the next position so after doing this i comes outside the loop it means the iteration is over and you will see now that okay all the zero elements have moved towards the end of the array and all the non-zero elements with the relative position intact are at the starting of the array so this is the entire approach it is very simple you just have to take two cases if the current element is zero then what to do if the current element is not zero then what to do so this is the simple case in which we can do this so i hope now the question and approach is clear to you and if you are finding this video very useful then please hit that like button as well as subscribe button because these things motivate us for making more such videos so now let us quickly move towards the editor and write the code for it okay so guys for saving time as you all know i have already written the code let's just go line by line to see what that code is okay so first of all we have taken n as input that is the length of the array then we have taken all the elements of the array as input okay then i told you we will be taking two variables j is equal j and i so i will be for iterating over the array and j will be denoting the latest position of zero element okay so both will be starting with zero only that is zero index only so j equal to zero and i is also equal to zero now while iterating the array i have told you there are two conditions possible that is if the current element is zero then what to do if the current element is not equal to zero then what to do so it was simple that if the current element is zero then we had to do nothing okay we just have to do i plus plus that are that this loop is doing automatically so that condition is handled automatically now the condition was if the current element is not equal to zero so if the current element is not equal to zero what i told you i told you to swap the values of error of i and error of j i told you by dry running it what will happen and then what we'll do we will do both i plus plus and j plus plus so j plus plus we will have to do manually but i plus plus again it will be handled by this loop only for next situation it will automatically go to the next i position okay so this was the case if it, if the current element was zero no need to do anything if the current element is not equal to zero then swap the values of error of i and error of j and do j plus plus okay and now see one more thing we are using this library that is hash include bit slash stdc plus plus dot h it contains all the inbuilt functions and all the like stack queues as well as the swap L, swap method so this is an inbuilt method you don't need to go and write the swap function for it so this is the inbuilt method okay so for using this inbuilt method you just have to include this particular library okay and you will be able to use it so once this loop is over we know that all the zeros have been moved towards the end of the array and all the non-zero elements with the relative positions are in the front of the array so we using this for loop we are simply printing the array printing the required array once all the swapping has happened so let's just quickly run this code and let's just see if it is working fine or not so we have taken our example here so eight elements are there four five zero one nine zero five zero so it should give us that all the non-zero elements with their relative position are in the front so all the non-zero elements with their relative position are in front and all the zeros are at end let's just take one more example here so let's just give it six and let's just give it okay zero zero 
वन टू थ्री फोर सो वन टू थ्री फोर शुड कम एट फ्रंट एंड जीरो जीरो शुड गो एट द लास्ट सो लेट जस्ट सी इट गिव्स द करेक्ट आंसर नॉट सो येस द आंसर इज करेक्ट सो दिस पर्टिकुलर कोड विल पास ऑल यू टेस्ट केसेज दैट विल बी गिवन टू यू प्लीज इट द लाइक बटन इफ यू लाइक दिस सोल्यूशन एंड आई लाइक द अप्रोच ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन दिस वॉज इट फॉर दिस वीडियो थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो